Welcome to Far Out with Faust. I'm Faust Ciccio, and you may want to sit down and buckle up because we've got some big breaking news that no one else seems to be talking about. But this week, Virginia may have gotten America one step closer to a new amendment. For the women of Virginia and the women of America, the resolution has finally passed. These votes Wednesday in the Virginia House. Senate Joint Resolution 1 is agreed to. And Senate were celebrated as a possible turning point by ERA supporters like Donna Gransky, who's been fighting for the amendment since the 1970s. The only way that we can guarantee gender equality is for it to be enshrined in the United States Constitution. The Equal Rights Amendment was first introduced to Congress in 1923. It took 49 sessions to finally get it passed in 1972. The ERA, as it's known, reads, Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Wow! Women are now equal in America. <laughs> also, also... Wow, women are now equal in America? Because, I mean, that statement sounds good, but it doesn't make you feel good. The Equal Rights Amendment. It's something that's been under consideration for a while. The struggle for an Equal Rights Amendment traces back to 1923, when feminist Alice Paul wrote the words that became ERA. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. And that's basically it. The core of the Equal Rights Amendment is just 24 words long, and the idea behind it is broadly popular. In fact, according to advocates, 80% of us think it's already in the Constitution. It's one of those things that's so obvious, you assume we already have it. It's like when you see baking soda at the store. You think, I don't need to buy baking soda. I definitely already have baking soda. It's a staple. And then you get home, and you're baking a cake, and you reach in the cupboard for baking soda, and you realise, fuck, women still aren't guaranteed equal rights under the Constitution. And I'm also thrilled to bring in a friend of mine, Hunter Richards, who is a filmmaker, uh, an activist, and an entrepreneur. Hunter, thanks for stopping by, brother. Yeah, you're hot on the ERA uh, story, huh? And that's where we're at today, absolutely. I mean, what amazes me is we started the Free the Nipple movement probably, I think, back in 2010. I was a co-founder of it, and uh, we made a, a little movie that got destroyed during uh, Hurricane Sandy. Anyway, out of it came the Free the Nipple movement, which was a gender equality movement. And a few of the girls that you're going to be talking to today went on and did the uh, Equal Means Equal, and they've just now passed the 38th state to ratify the ERA, and no one's fucking talking about it. That's right. Nobody's nobody's talking about it at all. No one's talking about really anything besides, you know, you know what. And for some godforsaken reason, no one gives a shit. So it, it, phenomenal, man. I, you know, and I, um, I, I appreciate you, you know, hooking me, connecting me with these extremely intelligent I'm the one who broke young... the story for Faust just to, that's right uh, um, and uh, you know appreciate it man I mean I, you know I've been talking to them and, and it, it, incredible the story that is going under the radar right now and, and right next to you know the, the fact that there was disclosure about UFOs and no one talked about that either but I mean this, this is just uh, so so old and so so long in the making so but Natalie uh, and, and Sarah really took up the mantle. And also Lizzie Jagger, who is a you know, mixed kid, mm -hmm. um, got involved. What's that dude? Who's the big uh, the guy from Fox? Uh, Rupert Murdoch. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lizzie's uh, uh, stepfather. And he, he got involved and Mick got involved. And uh, mm. I know in, I think it was, so, so the deal is they'll tell you about it. I got a, I got a, I got a crew soon. They'll tell you about it. But it was, it was started in like, 1923 by Alice right. Paul, and then it, the House and the Senate finally passed it in 73, and then for some fucking weird reason, they said, you have seven years to ratify the next That's 13 right. states. And they got held up and stalled out, and eventually the deadline passed, right? As soon as Reagan came in, yeah, that was it was killed. And then, I can't remember, but they'll explain it to you, but for some reason, the deadline wasn't included in the byline or the prelude or, 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 or the bill. I can't remember what, it, what exactly That's the right. it was. But I don't understand, you know, it's so hard to get an amendment passed in this country. It's been a hundred years. It's a hundred year uh, yeah. movement. Just, you know, uh, 1920 yeah. was when women finally got to vote. And then uh, I think the next one was supposed to, the ERA was supposed to be the 20, 20th or 21st amendment. And it took, 
I don't know, 50 years for the House and Senate to pass, and then it took, you know. I mean, it, it, almost almost a hundred year span, almost a hundred year. Yeah, to just more. just for yeah. Uh, I mean, it, that is it's mind blowing. I mean, honestly. it's mind blowing that we're in 2020 and people are arguing that women shouldn't be included in the Constitution. That's what's fucking mind blowing. And coming up with reasons why, well, you know, we don't look like just just fix it so that it says that there that it's part of it. You know what I mean? Like whatever the argument is. It's just only in politics. We're in 2020, 2020. and passed this incredibly impossible thing to do, which is to get an amendment, the 20th Amendment passed in our country, and people are, uh, they're, they're like out the floor. No one noticed. Nobody noticed. Nobody cares. No. Nobody I mean, it was on the news for like one hot second, and I knew you were doing this podcast, and I was like, bro, if you want to talk about a story that's, now they're yeah, going man. to the Supreme Court, and like William Barr was trying to stop it. He was trying to stop the archival department. They'll go into all this shit. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to take yeah. their away. And there's still but, fight. There's still there's still a fight going on. You know, it's there's just still there's still. They gotta go to the Supreme Court, and and this it's just it's just insane. Like I don't even know why they put a, a deadline on a bill anyway. No, you know? it makes no fucking except to kill it. Why else? Can't we have a female, you know, possible uh, vice president here, and she's yeah. not even in the Constitution. I mean, women yeah. aren't even included. And and you know they'll go into all the ramifications of why that is. But I just I don't know. I'm glad you picked up a story. Yeah, we're checking it out. Um, Thanks, I, got a, I got a blow, but um, this appreciate is it, man. Enlightening and uh, enjoy these girls. Thanks, they're bro. Alive. They're live. They're out yeah. of their control. <laughs> awesome. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Thanks again, bro. Appreciate Good it. Good luck with that. Today we have Sarah Beth Stroller and Natalie White, two of the major activists and influencers behind the ratification of the ERA. Uh, Sarah is a self-described impact artist. She's an actress, an activist, and an autodidactic polymath. And Natalie is a provocative artist, activist, and fierce crusader for women's rights. She's been amused to a swath of artists and photographers from Peter Beard to Sean Lennon and George Kondo, just to name a few. And in 2017, Natalie became the co-director of the Equal Means Equal Organization with Sarah Beth, whose core mission to ratify the final three states to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, which happened in January of this year, although you wouldn't know it thanks to our awesome media. Uh, Sarah and Natalie, I'm so honored to have you guys on. Thanks so much for joining me on this call. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for you. having us. Great introduction. Well put. Thank you. Um, so let's get right into it, man. We, I mean, there's some like earth shattering news that no one seems to be talking about, you know. And just to set the stage, uh, back in January of this year, you guys were both in Virginia, right, uh, on the floor of the Senate after a five-year battle um, when they finally, finally ratified the 38th and final state needed to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Is that? Yeah, we were there in the Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It must be an emotional roller coaster, the fact that this is still going on. Uh, I mean, can you walk me through the, the, the madness of this, of how Virginia finally has passed um, this and then like the roles that you guys had as activists in this historic accomplishment? Okay, in the summer of 2015, I was taking a cab ride with a friend down to see Natalie's art show and he explained to me the status of the Equal Rights Amendment. And I was so moved by the fact that nobody knew about it. I knew there was something, like if that many people are unaware of something, of, that nature there's there's something to it anyway i was charged electrically and i went and told natalie about it who was doing this art show where she was inside of you look you look you can explain that afterward yeah and basically you know i had this i got the spark and natalie took it and basically made it into this torch this massive torch and then we ended up uniting with um you know through serendipity and stuff with camilla lopez who is working on a film equal means equal and a gr our group sort of congealed, I'd say, organically. That was the karmic butterfly that flapped its wings and started you on this journey? Yeah, there was a definite charge to it. It was like, wait, what? Wait, what? And why didn't our, uh, you know, mothers tell us about it? And then, you know, that's a whole nother roller coaster where our, jur you know, journey. But basically what it seemed like, what we could gauge from their generation was that when the deadline failed, um, they got so depressed and defeated that they actually just gave up and they didn't for, for the most part that generation didn't tell their daughter's generation about right you know, what they well you know the biggest opposition to um the equal rights amendment we found is like evangelical christians who believe that anything that gives women more rights leads to more abortions 
even though the ERA has nothing to do with abortion, um, because men and women are biologically different. So the ERA could pass today and Roe v. Wade could, could, be, um, could be taken away tomorrow. I just don't understand how this is still, you know, an issue. Like, what are the biggest oppositions to passing an amendment that should have literally, you know, went through 100 years ago? It seems to mostly be ideological and based around, well, at least that's what they're using to get people to su support stopping it is, you know, it mostly circles around the pro-life movement, which, hmm. you know, the, this, this amendment has nothing to do with that. So the people who have the most money to lose are insurance companies because they can't keep on gouging women um, for insurance prices and having them pay much higher premiums if the ERA was in place. So, I mean, it makes sense that the, ins I'm not saying that this happened for sure, but it makes sense that like the insurance companies came in and were like, wow, we're gonna lose a lot of money not being able to gouge women for insurance prices. Let's just, you know, convince the evangelical Christians who have a massive base and, you know, come out and vote and donate to conservative causes that this is all about abortion. <laughs> I mean, you must know that most women don't know that, they don't understand that, they, that they, the they wouldn't believe that was true if you told them. I, that's what I think. I mean... We, that was the big uh, shocker on, along the whole process of it was, and the way that people react emotionally and stuff when you tell them, like, you no, know, women are not guaranteed civil or human rights in on a federal level in the United States, and they're people are blown away and they, then they they go through like a set of emotions like first they're like oh what no way that's denial true. Yeah. oh my god and then they're like oh my god and they're shocked and then they get kind of angry and sad and then pissed off but pissed off about not having been told about it you know yeah in in civics class or any, social studies or anything it's never right mentioned that why, way now why do you think that is because, because i'll tell you why i think <laughs> because it's the men who are writing writing the lesson plans. That's why. I don't know. It's like people are fighting over the the stargate, the uterus, the portal into the world. Who's going to have control over it, men or women? And they they think it's a zero sum game. Well, you know? yeah. We're supposed to be working together. And any time any p people are truly uplifted, it brings everyone else up. So, you know, after doing some research, I discovered Sarah that you were the inspiration for one of the one of the founders, I should say, of the infamous Free the Nipple, uh, the gender equality movement back in 2012, and that, yes. Natalie, you were very involved in that campaign, too, and I saw you guys both in that movie. Um, Sarah, what exactly was <laughs> your mission in, uh, of Free the Nipple, and you know, did that have any impact on you in, in your mm -hmm. later mission to pass the ERA? Um, my inspiration at the time, Lena and uh, Lena Esco and I were working together on a, you know, sort of improvisational little project. She was inspired by how I was kind of funny and stuff. And then you are funny. I was telling her, you know, <laughs> I was telling her that um, I was like, well, because I I'm um, really interested in ancient history and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of far out ideas and technology and everything. Mm -hmm. And I. I've got, you know, this frustration that why don't more people wake up and just be more interested in things, right? And so I said to her, if we want to get these grand concepts into the minds of the people, you know, we're going to have to show a little boobs, you know, and make it really <laughs> beautiful, right? You get a lot of attention, yeah. And, yeah. and um, you know, Lena, I would say this, it was, free the nipple is Lena's thing. She took a little bit from me being ins inspirational, which I am like an instigator and a muse. And some of the things that I said to her just sparked her. She created the, um, you know, the free the nipple hashtag and everything like that. And I would say my my role in that from the beginning was mostly just as an ins inspiration and instigator. Yeah. <laughs> and then she found out that when I when I was um, breastfeeding, mm -hmm. my mother took me to a church and she had got kicked out of a church for breastfeeding. Oh. And Lena was outraged by it. She's like, that's just terrible, you know. I mean, it's a church and like the the mother they got you would think it would be the one place where they were accepting baby. of it you know well guess what after i i don't know how connected it is but after the whole free the nipple thing started suddenly the pope came out and said okay it's okay to breastfeed in church my god <laughs> so we, we won that one i guess anyway um yeah and then yeah i'm a i'm a instigator yeah. oh I, I, we have that in common that's great hold on i just pressed yeah. the wrong button. um so so Natalie, as a diehard activist, you know, I, I read several articles, actually, that, you know, that you, you, is it, and you tell me if this is true, did you walk all the way from New York to D.C. Um, and then 
you know, you arrived in the Capitol and then tell us about the 25 foot letters that you tagged there on the street. Well, in 2015, I was doing um, a performance art piece inside of a plexiglass box where I was topless and a plexiglass box on top of an American flag um, for seven hours a day, seven days a week for three weeks. And um, I didn't know really what that um, performance was about. So I said that it was about the lack of movement within the women's movement in, in America. And I had no idea why the women's movement wasn't moving. I could just feel that it wasn't. And at that time, Sarah Beth came to me and told me the reason why the women's movement isn't moving is because women don't have equal rights in the United States Constitution. And so that's when I came up with Natalie White for Equal Rights, which was a show at the White Box Foundation in New York where I had large installations all about the Equal Rights Amendment. And then following that, um, following that show, I did a performance art piece where I walked for 16 days, 250 miles from New York to DC. And the day after I arrived, I tagged ERA now with red paint and a brush. Um, I wasn't arrested on the spot. In fact, I, I did it and I walked away. And um, then I was arrested a week later. Um, they flew to DC uh, police office, two Capitol police officers from DC to New York to arrest me. I wasn't there. I was in DC the whole time. Um, and um, when I found out, I found out from my roommate that they had like kicked down my door to like come in and get me. So I called a friend of mine, Ron Kuby, who is a famous civil rights attorney in New York. And he found out that there was a warrant out for my arrest. So I decided to, you know, give myself up. And um, I spent a night in jail. And um, at, at a later, this was in August, uh, early August. And so um, they decided to press charges against me. And in September of 2016, before we knew who was going to be president and before we even knew that there would be a women's march, they set my trial date for January 17th. So everyone came into town for the women's march. And also, you know, all of, I was living in DC at the time and a bunch of my friends came and stayed with me, including Kamala, including Lizzie, including Sarah Beth, and also Patricia Arquette came into town, but she wasn't staying with me. And they were all, um, you know, character witnesses in my case. And, you know, I, so in September, I decided, I was like, I can't believe that these people are going to actually come after me for what was water soluble kids paint. Um, if it had rained that day, they wouldn't be even needed to wash away, you know, any of the letters. Um, so I decided to represent myself in court. So I went like all Abby Hoffman style on them. And I learned how to be a trial court lawyer for three months. I read like every law book you possibly could. It's not that hard. I don't know why anybody thinks that it's that difficult. We made the trial into a performance art piece, which ended up getting, you know, ahead of the Women's March, getting a lot of great publicity for the Equal Rights Amendment and really got the ERA into the zeitgeist of what everybody was talking about. They didn't speak about the Equal Rights Amendment on stage at all, which really surprised me because, you know, the Equal Rights, like if violence against women is a ship and equal and pay equality is a ship and immigration is a ship and then the ERA is the tide that rises that brings them all together. We so had a we had some great DJs and in between songs, Natalie or someone will be up there like tell informing people about the, it was we were doing a public service and fortunately we stumbled on this giant like um, golden star helium balloon which made us a hub in a way and so like it got it got pretty good. There were dance offs happening and everything and we were handing out information and because a lot you know the march was huge but a lot of people didn't have there were any particular there were so many different hardly anyone knew you know and it was a real we had a really good audience for what we were <laughs> trying to say hardly anyone there even knew that women didn't have equal rights so you guys mentioned i mean i heard you mention mick jagger and you know murdoch and somehow they were they were involved in this and you know how did so that lizzie's happen mom, lizzie's mom mar um, married rupert murdoch and lizzie jagger mm -hmm. whose father is mick jagger and Lizzie is another um, instigator. So she got her mom really, you know, fired up about it. And then she got Rupert into it. And then they started putting out ads for us um, in areas where where they were needed at the time that we were wow. 
working on the state, you know? Um, and they had it, you know, Elizabeth Jagger and Jerry Murdoch, they use those names because we're appealing to, you know. Yeah. Um, and then in, um, in Illinois, Lizzie's dad, uh, Mick Jagger wrote a letter an open letter to the Republicans saying, come on, just do it. You know, I've got daughters. And it would have been that. fucking awesome if he sung the letter to them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'd say that Jerry and Rupert's help were extremely helpful. You know, Very cool. And, and Mick Jagger. Just little things like that, you know, little things that get people thinking and talking about something. It's all about, you know, getting idea, making people feel comfortable with the idea of it and... A very interesting subject right now, and two controversial figures um, in in our president uh, and uh, Betsy Davos or Davos, however you say her name. DeVos. Um, you know, I know that you guys were the what? What is it? DeVos. Betsy, Be Betsy DeVos. I think. Oh, that's DeVos. How it's... That's Betsy DeVos. Thank you. Um, you know, I know that in October, I think it was 2017, that you you and uh, Kamala Lopez. You guys filed the first lawsuit against the Trump administration right. and, and the education secretary for their illegal order to schools, encouraging them to violate the civil rights provisions that are guaranteed to women and girls under Title IX. So Betsy DeVos sent out a Dear Colleagues letter telling colleges and universities all over the U.S. that they didn't have to abide by the Title IX rules, um, specifically the ones that had to do with rape and sexual assault on campus. Um, that's a violation of Title IX. That violates very important federal laws. And, you know, yet Betsy DeVos said, hey, if you're a female and you go to a university, we aren't going to stand up for you if you're raped or sexually assaulted on campus. She actually said something like, if everything is sexual assault, then nothing is. And I'm like, oh no, okay, that's ridiculous. Sexual assault is sexual assault. Maybe not everything in this world is sexual assault. Maybe this lamp isn't sexual assault, but sexual assault is definitely sexual assault. So um, we sued Betsy DeVos in federal court in Boston. Um, and you know what was really great about that, other than being able to sue Betsy DeVos to uphold Title IX, is that we got to um, serve Jeff Sessions, uh, which made me really happy because Jeff Sessions is pretty much the most racist person in government, was the race, most racist person in government politics. In fact, he was. Um, not in history, but I mean, you know, like in the Trump administration, at least. He was denied a federal judgeship in the state of Alabama for being too racist, but for some reason was allowed to be our attorney general. Um, so we got to serve him in the Betsy DeVos case. So I want to, you know, I know we talked a little bit about this, but I want to I want to go back over it a little bit uh, as far as the where the ERA sits right now. Um, and and, you know, what's the the clearest roadmap to victory would you say technically it's the law of the land according to the constitution and we just need the archivist to write it in there so so you guys are suing him right we're suing him to do his job for we the people that's his job is after 38 states ratify an amendment according to article 5 then he does his job and writes it in there and he's not doing his job so we might have to take it. I mean, what the like fuck now. is he doing? I mean, if he's not like, what is he doing? Isn't that his only job? I mean, right now, the ERA is the law of the land. It is the 28th Amendment of the United States Constitution. It's just been failed to be certified by the archivist of the U.S. Constitution, which, by the way, is a ministerial task. It's like a, being a librarian. So uh, and I think that the archivist of the U.S. Constitution actually really does want to record this amendment. But the Department of Justice sent out a memo saying that he legally couldn't. And so he sent back a letter, which all of this is public. And so that's what we're attempting to get right now is a high court order. Uh, when we filed our lawsuit January 7th, I believe, of 2020, preceding um, Virginia's 38th ratification. And um, so it was almost like he was asking us to sue him. So we are suing him. Uh, the lawsuit is currently on the appellate level. Um, we've appealed to the Court of Appeals in Massachusetts, and we've also appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States. 
we need the Supreme Court of the United States of America to not be swayed by political parties and um, instead just rule on the constitutional legality. And if they only rule on the constitutional legality, equal, equal rights amendment will be certified. This whole idea about this deadline is ridiculous, mostly because the last amendment to be added to the United States Constitution, the 27th Amendment, uh, was written by James Madison, and it took 202 years to finish its ratification. And it's about congressional pay raise, which, you know, affects a very minuscule percentage of a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of United States citizens, whereas the Equal Rights Amendment affects 51% of American citizens. So the idea that one amendment should have a nine-year deadline or a 10-year deadline, and one amendment should have 202 years to be added, is completely ridiculous. So once the ERA is in the books, you know, and the 28th Amendment is set in stone, as it should be, you know, what, what rights will women immediately have that they didn't have before? Let, like, let's lay that out. And what rights will they lose? We'll have federal legal recourse. So right now, all, all of the advances in women's rights that have been made in this country are essentially like a house of cards built on lawsuits, which can be appealed and overturned and, and things like that. Some states do have a state equal rights um, amendment to the their or con, or they have equal rights written into the state constitution, but a lot of them don't. And so once you get to the high courts in the states, it's game over. You can't appeal to any laws. Right. The federal, you know. Right. You know, what will happen immediately is that there are a bunch of state laws, most of them have to do with um, violence against women, that will have to be struck down, reversed, and, up, and, some, and in some cases completely changed because they discriminate against women. For instance, what, one thing that has to do with equal pay is the largest class action lawsuit in gender discrimination um, against women um, was Betty Dukes versus Walmart, largest class action lawsuit in gender discrimination history. At every state level, and uh, it was um, about, you know, Walmart discriminating against their female employees and paying them less money and um, promoting them at an unequal level. And the women won, as the, as the litigants, the women won at every state level and a, every state court of appeals le le level. Um, and then when it got up to the federal level at the U.S. Supreme Court, that those state laws got struck down and the U.S. Supreme Court, as they said, there is no constitutional basis that says that Walmart has to pay women equally. Um, and they struck down those state laws for lack of constitutional foundation and they found in favor of Walmart. And they gave every corporation in America the green light to pay women less money. And what did, what did the corporations do? They did it. And actually, you know, they have to, especially, you know, publicly traded companies that uh, have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to save money when they can, got the green light to pay women less money. Also, we couldn't sign the um, CEDAW, the, the what, what does CEDAW stand for? I'm having a brain fart against the elimin elimination of discrimination against women, the United Nations Treaty. Right. Like the UN has a Bill of Rights for Women. It's known as CEDAW. It's the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. It's been signed and ratified by virtually every member nation of the UN, except for Iran, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, the two Pacific Island nations, of um, Palau and Tongo and the United States of America. And, you know, that's really bad, <laughs> obviously. And when, um, when the United States is asked why we haven't signed and implemented CEDAW, they always claim, well, we don't have an equal rights amendment for women in our own country. So that means therefore we can't sign on to CEDAW as for the Women's Bill of Rights for the UN either which makes it really difficult for women to go to other countries and fight for women's rights because a lot of these countries are looking at America and being like, well, they didn't sign on to CEDAW. They didn't implement CEDAW. Why should we have to? And, you know, when we go to other countries to fight for women's rights, they say, well, women don't have equal rights in the United States. They haven't signed on to CEDAW. Why are they coming here and preaching to us? You know, this is going to sound so cheesy, but I was... 
I was meditating earlier and I, my son was having a really rough day and I was uh, sending him a lot of energy and love. And I was, and, and I just thought about if humanity could see through this illusion of difference, you know, that we, that when we look at our individuality, if we could see how we were truly all brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and lovers, then imagine how that's di why different we would treat each other, you know. That's why the whole Martin Luther King thing and w was the more the correct direction to go in, which is like, hey, let's all come together and 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 unite as human beings and and you know make discernments about each other based on merit and character. He and he was. It seems uh, like. Yeah, he had the right idea, and nobody. I don't know who's done it quite like him since. I mean, he had you know, he he was like. Uh, he had a touch of an ascended master in him very much you know he was he was amazing yeah and that's not what's going on now you know it's like ah, so so much anger and blame and and i i i'll blame somebody i i've, I've noticed that the media has been <laughs> i was going to wear my like, defund the media shirt been, but i thought it would be too yeah, much yeah please because they they've been <laughs> They want. They make more money when people tune in. All of you have course. to do is follow the money, and people tune in when they're angry and afraid. So whatever they can do to st stoke anger and fear, it seems like they're they've been doing. And that, but also they're criminally negligent in their lack of reporting oh, on man. the violence that had been going on for months. Pretending like calling it peaceful protests and stuff when whole cities are being destroyed. Yeah, tell me about it. I live in New York City, and I've seen some of it. And you know, I've it's seen like they want it to happen. And... So uh, we lost Natalie, but we, uh, we're going to just keep going. Um, I know that her connection wasn't great, and she actually had to bounce anyway. Um, so, but Sarah Beth, let me ask you, you know, can you take me through Illinois again and what happened there and then on to Nevada? Can we, can we go over that again? This is why I had to. Br I brought Natalie <laughs> in the first place right. because I wasn't in Illinois a lot. I know that Lizzie, they, they were there lobbying quite a bit. Um, even Theodore Richards came and was lobbying in Illinois. And yeah, because we got a Republican on our side and he was able to go in and negotiate, we ended up getting the supermajority that we needed. Yeah, you know, and I'd be grateful if you could hook me up with anyone else involved who could help us further this. Okay, well, I will put you in touch with Kamala Lopez, Wendy Murphy, and Elizabeth Jagger. They will... Nice. I want to meet Mick Jagger's daughter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Sarah, I'm, you know, you're on Far Out with Faust, so we have to get a little far out. And I'm ex I have to ask you some questions that are not exactly on topic, but um, That's fine. I'm, I'm going to ask them anyway. So, you know, tell me how you feel about, like, aliens I, I hate that word but you know extraterrestrials like higher vibrational beings higher evolved beings whatever you want to call them i'm assuming they're more evolved than us <laughs> make a some are leap. and some are some aliens are idiots okay <laughs> i mean i i believe it you know i'm sure they come in all shapes yeah, and we live in a universe that's like an ocean it's teeming with life word on the street human beings are kind of yeah. we're ubiquitous in this in this universe we're all over the place yeah um we're we came out here, I'll just say word on the street or they say, and those are good titles for my books. You know? I love that, that. We were doing reconnaissance for the Pleiadians mm -hmm. who actually see our planet as the, as the farthest star in their, in the Pleiades. They, they think we're in the Pleiades in the wild west of the Pleiades. Okay. And then yeah. we got here and got ambushed by these ancient yeah. reptilian. The, the Anunnaki, you know, right? I mean, some would argue the, that it was the Anunnaki, but yeah, our seeds go back before them. I you got know. really into the Anunnaki thing, but those I think those are more people that came from another place and, and had and had a bunch of drama here. You know that that the Anunnaki yeah. are. There are some people who believe that they are they were reptilian, though. You know that, right? I mean, like a lot of people believe that that's where the reptilian. I, mean, I think it was seeded before that, but. Um, well, the reptilians had been here for millions of years, worshiping yeah. an AI deep underground, which is so advanced that it's basically exists almost purely in the form of software and nanobots. I see and now again, why you and Hunter are friends. Lives, 
Yeah, it lit, <laughs> it, it it gets its nanobots inside of their followers or the reptilians or whatever, and then the AI is able to play around in this world without incurring any karma, and so that that's you know some people say that's spreading up here, and that's why they're spraying the skies. Yeah, <laughs> but, like we're being uploaded into that AI's system, and then there's a over over time there's a cycle of merging and dis disintegration of the relationship between carbon and silicon based intelligence systems yeah. and that we're it's like a sine wave and we're at a point where we're merging a, again and it's happened so many times in the past that it's unclear who created who yeah and, and it's happened the, so many times on AIs other other planets AIs, you know well ai let's just say silicon and carbon based intelligence systems it's unclear which one created the other one it seems to go back and forth and we're blend I mean, it, this is silica here. Right. It's one, it's literally, what is it, like <laughs> one one molecule away from carbon, silicon, and car. It's like I don't, either a molecule or element or... Carbon has six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons. So anytime you hear 666, what, it, what it's really referring to is the physical carbon-based world of life and living things. Um, Not you know, the numbers, beast. Neither, <laughs> Not the devil. Their number is not good or evil. A symbol is not good. Or so how how are you using it? You know, and if you've demonized the physical realm, then six 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 is evil. You yeah. know. Yeah, and that's yeah. Obviously, there's but a really lot of history. Really, it's you in see that. six six six. It's I looked into this, and it's it's, it's like telling you to figure out what your gift is in this carbon based body reality, and then give it freely, and then you get everything. Then you get all the riches and glory. But it's not through grasping, it's no. through finding out what you have to offer and then giving it truly, deeply, freely. That's the greatest So that's the good gift. news about 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> Sarah Bethby, that I always ask all my guests, um, let's say you were leaving the planet uh, and you passed another UFO going the opposite direction and they were like, we're going to go live among these crazy people what what do we need to know i think what, watch what, out they're crazy what would you what would you tell them if you could give them three three bits of advice on what they need to know to fit in or or whatever <laughs> you know well, help whatever you would whatever you would tell them go to the hopi reservation first and yeah. if you want to not be having to deal with a bunch of assholes or something um <laughs> but i think no. that they say that this there's so many different theories and things and it's all i don't grab onto any one of them and say this is what it is but right. some of them resonate and one of them is that this planet is sort of like a nut house it's an insane asylum for mm -hmm. the criminally insane or the what those are basically would if our if certain ideologies here would spread to the rest of the universe it would just cause more misery and suffering right. so it's and then if you looked into the disclosure project and stuff, a lot of what yeah. the amalgamation of all of their different testimonies and stuff points to is this picture of them essentially tar wrangling up there, you know, taking it like every time we try to start blow something up too much or whatever they disactivate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know all so, about it. Yeah. Yeah. We're like in a daycare. We're, for we're young. We're young. Yeah. We're babies. <laughs> we I are babies. <laughs> You I have say, to be patient so with I, babies. What I would say to them is, I would say, be good to the babies. <laughs> yeah. Well, Don't that would hurt be the perfect, baby. That would be perfect advice. And you could convince them to stop hurting the babies too. And that's another thing with the Equal Rights Amendment that got me passionately uh, about, how do I say this? Male genital mutilation is not good, okay? It's just as bad as female genital mutilation. And right yeah. now, the Equal Rights Amendment it could possibly create a scenario where suddenly... Little little baby boys have a right to not have parts of their body removed without yeah. their consent, because it's illegal for to do it to females. Yeah. You know? So that's a big win for men that has that's going to do nothing but make life better for women. Right? Sarah Beth, Sarah Beth, thank you so much for coming on, uh, and please tell Natalie that uh, you know I will, we're going to reach out to her anyway. But grateful to have her on. We we have to let's let's have another conversation about this and kind of finish whatever we didn't get into this time but i appreciate uh your excitement your enthusiasm your determination for this um and i'm so grateful to have had you on and, and met you 
um, thank you. And thank you for giving us the the time and the and the platform. Absolutely. All well, it's deeply appreciated. I'm, I'm just getting started, and we're. I look forward to the next uh, chapter. Absolutely, I'm going to have you guys back on for sure. Okay, great. Thanks again, Sarah. All right, cheerio. Enjoy the you rest take of care. the day. Cheers. You are tapping into the most important amendment to the Constitution. You have to be an activist to agree that it's bullshit that a man can walk around shirtless on a hot summer's day and a woman will get arrested for it. How do we change the censorship laws in America? Every day the media plays glorified images of violence yet discourage nudity. And so many of our heroes solve problems through killing and violence. We need new heroes, new stories, and we need them now.